Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our Testimony Tuesday program. I am BJ Garrett, Executive Director for Christ-Centered Abortion Recovery and Education. And tonight, I have my dear friend um, and care ministry volunteer. She's served basically every role that you can serve in ministry and in the church, Miss Jo Lyon. So welcome, Jo Lyon. Thank you, BJ. It's good to be here with you today. Thank you so much. Well, we're just going to dive in. Um, but first, I just want to say, you know, thank you for all of your many, many years of service for the care ministry. And um, literally, y'all, she has served every role um, from leading Bible study, serving on the board, board president. And she has not only been very influential in my own healing from my past abortions, but she has served as a friend and as a ministry partner um, with me for almost 10 years now. So thank you for that. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Uh, also, and this is just a little bonus for all of you people watching. She is also the one who very um, directed by the Lord began to break down the walls of my second abortion. And I didn't like it at the time when she spoke the words, Lord, the Lord's words from her heart to mine. Um, but uh, Joe Lyon is the woman who really was instrumental in, um, in me addressing my second abortion, which up until meeting her had been completely buried um, in the abyss of my deception from my heart. So anyways, thank you for that because you have played a huge role. Yeah. It, it was a privilege that you've been in our classes, but um, God did a really great work every weekend, but uh, that weekend, especially for you. So it was yeah. awesome. It was awesome. All I'm right. Part of that. <laughs> let's just dive in and as let's tell um, the the people watching tonight uh, your story. Well, I started out. Um, I am a pastor's daughter, and uh, my dad pastored a church all my life until he passed away a few years before he passed away. But um, I was uh, raised in a very strict home. Uh, I'm very thankful for that now, but uh, at the time I was uh, like a t every teenager rebellious, but, uh, and I didn't really get rebellious until after I got, got grown and left home. So after I, I left home, I decided that, you know, I was on my own, I could do whatever I wanted to do. And so I started dating a young man and I had already moved out and was living on my own and I started dating a young man and after a very short period of time, I found out I was pregnant. Well, being raised the way I was and being a pastor's daughter, first of all, I knew the judgment was coming and I knew that uh, I did not want to embarrass my parents, but I also knew that um, it was a great sin. And during that time, which was uh, many years ago, um, being pregnant and not married was just not the thing to to do. And so uh, I decided that, uh, well, first when I found out I was pregnant, I got kind of excited because it was like I was dating this guy. He was very nice. He was nice looking. And um, it was, you know, it was like, oh, we'll get married and then we'll, you know, we'll have this beautiful baby and we'll just ride off in the sunset and live happily forever after until I told him. And then once I told him that I was pregnant, then uh, it was like, uh, well, I'm not ready to be a dad, and I don't want to get married. So the only other, I, I didn't feel like I had any other option. And actually, I didn't even think about abortion until uh, he mentioned it, and that his sister-in-law had had an abortion, and to go talk with her. So I felt like I was backed in a corner, so I went and talked with her. Well, we did find a place to to have an abortion. I had to go out of state because during that time, it was in 1972, Roe versus Wade was not even, you know, it was not even legal yet. Uh, but it was legal in Kansas. And so I went to Kansas and had an abortion. And uh, that's actually where he was living. And I was living in another uh, state. So when I went and had the abortion, um, the morning after, I felt like, well, actually, it was right after the abortion. I felt like I had just been uh, hollowed out on the inside. I was just so full of shame and regret. And I knew 
uh, abortion was not talked about a lot during that time, but I knew that it was not right. I knew that I had done something wrong, terribly wrong. And so um, I put that inside of my heart and closed the door. And I said, never again will it be mentioned. And other than a couple of very dear friends, uh, I had not never told anybody. So for nearly 30 years, um, I carried that burden and that shame of of abortion, uh, preacher's daughters just don't get pregnant. So, um, but the morning so I after- want, I ahead. wanna ask you, you know, you made the comment, preacher's daughters just don't get pregnant outside of being married. Right. Um, how did you wrap your mind around, they don't get pregnant, but they do have abortions? Do you know, I had gone into such deep denial that I would even deny that I had an abortion. So I never really related it to, you know, it, it's just like, you don't get pregnant. You just don't get pregnant. Well, <laughs> if you don't get pregnant, you don't have an abortion. So <laughs> I had just, I mean, really had gone to denial if anybody had asked me. And I lied many times on a doctor's report, you know, when it says, uh, have you had an abortion? I, I said no every single time because I was in such deep denial and shame. And um, I couldn't even be around um, anybody talking about abortion. I wouldn't even say the word. But, um, and I ne after, um, the morning after I had the abortion, when my boyfriend told me goodbye, that was goodbye. There, I'd never seen him again. So, uh, and that happens quite frequently. I, I was at a, uh, I was a volunteer at a pregnancy resource center, and that's what we tell the girls. Um, you have an abortion, it could be the end of your relationship, and most of the times it is. So um, I carried this burden for about, for nearly 30 years. The shame and regret, the uh, not being able to even be free, actually. I stayed in church, I worked in church, I did everything I felt. I worked really hard to prove to God that I was a good Christian girl and that, you know, I really deserve to go to heaven. And uh, I had asked the Lord to forgive me, but yet I carried that heavy burden because uh, the burden was so heavy that I felt like that it had to be me and God to carry the same burden, you know. I mean, I know God forgives. And, uh, but I was forgetting about the grace and uh, I knew he forgive me, but yet, um, and women say, I can't forgive myself. And, and that is, there's a lot of truth in that. I couldn't forgive myself, but later on when the Lord began to heal me, uh, he let me know, he whispered in my heart. He said, it wasn't that you couldn't forgive yourself is that you didn't believe that I forgave you the first time you asked. And that was true because I had to beg, I felt like I had to beg God. Every time I was on my knees, I would beg God, please forgive me, please forgive me. And I mean, it was thousands of times that I had begged God. So it was my unbelief that I did not receive freedom from it. But- uh, Why do you think, um, why do you think that the, the trauma from abortion and talking about forgiveness and, and receiving the Lord's forgiveness and forgiving ourselves. Why do you think that that crosses all other sins? I mean, the worst of the worst sinners can receive the healing forgiveness of Jesus Christ. But for most of us who have chosen abortion, we, we believe that. We know in our minds to be true. But when it comes to actually applying that forgiveness, to the healing brokenness of our hearts from abortion, we kind of like, we just draw this line and, and we're like, you know, his, his blood was big enough for this and all of these things, but for mm -hmm. abortion, we're just like, except for this, this was too big, too bad, too ugly. Yeah. Why, why do you think that is? And, and do you agree that most of us that have chosen abortion feel that way? You know, uh, yeah, I really believe that. Uh, I believe that we as women that have uh, gone through abortion really believe that. And, and I'm supposed men believe that too. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really know. Um, maybe uh, the Bible speaks of sinning against the body that, uh, that, you know, that there are so many other sins, you know, like lying and, and stealing and, you know, but when, 
a sexual sin, such as even sin outside of marriage, but anything, uh, I think that is part of that sinning against the body. We have taken what God uh, has ordained women to, uh, to do is to uh, shelter our children, to protect our children as far as we can and nurture them. And we have done exactly opposite what God has asked women to do to nurture our children. We have sinned against our body and not only ours, but a living being. We have taken the life of a child, of a baby. And it is sometimes it is it's so hard for us to to release that unto the Lord because we have done such a horrific thing. And uh, and God says, you know. I, I, you know, I forgive if you just come to me and, and I know that the Lord forgave me many years ago, but it was, I felt like I had to carry that burden to be, to be worthy of his forgiveness. And that's not what the Bible says at all. He's, uh, you know, Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. I will give you peace over this, you know, uh, and, and forgiveness. So, uh, it took many years for me to receive forgiveness like I felt like I need to receive it because uh, I felt like I need to work to prove to God that I was really, I was really worthy of this. Yeah. And um, it wasn't, it wasn't that at all. It's by his grace and his loving, tenderly um, mercy to us. Uh, it, after about, it was nearly 30 years that I carried that burden. And so one summer I began to just really seek God and began to want a closer walk with him. And so the Lord began to, you know, we, I would pray and I would just seek God and, and read the word and just, you know, really pray, God, you know, show me, show me who you are. But there was such a, I had such a part of my heart that was, blocked off that God was not able to even bust through the doors because I wouldn't let him. And um, so he began to deal with my heart about the abortion. And first, first of all, it took me a long time to even say, yes, Lord, I'll give you my abortion because that was mine. I had done that and I needed to carry that burden. So when I finally told the Lord, yes, I will give you my abortion, I knew that he, he had a plan for it. And that's, and that's what, you know, that's what the word says. He takes the worst thing in our lives, the things that are, are the horrible parts of our lives and what Satan meant to destroy us with, God takes that and turns it into something good. And that's what he did with my abortion. It was horrific. I will always regret, but I don't live in regret because God has come in. He has cleaned that part out. I have opened the door uh, that I had uh, blocked off from him for so many years. He had told me, uh, you have not given me your whole heart, which I'm thinking, you're kidding. Yes, I have. And no, I had not given him my whole heart because that part was mine and I was not allowing him to take part of that. Uh, so after I finally, it, it took, there was a three month period that me and the Lord went through this. And so after uh, I finally turned, I said, okay, Lord, I, I'm so tired of carrying this. I'm tired of carrying this burden. I'm tired of, of just Satan would just pound it over my head every single time. And my parents did not know it. My mother had already passed on. Uh, and then finally he took me, the Lord took me through a Bible study. And I didn't even know if that's what he was doing. Cause we, the very scriptures that the Lord led me to, uh, during that three month period of time, um, are the scriptures that we use in our Bible studies today. And since then I've gone through many Bible studies, but it's so awesome how that every time I go through a Bible study, even for someone else, the Lord shows something new to me. So, and you know, you, you realize that too, every time you lead a Bible study that God just he does awesome work during those studies. Yeah, he so, never stops working on our hearts. Yeah, no, no, there's always something new. And so after that, uh, I really began to, I said, okay, God, you can have it. And we went through this Bible study and he did such a, a tremendous work in my heart 
And then he told me that I would, the thing I had to do, the reason I had the abortion was so my parents wouldn't find out is that I had to tell my parents. And my husband and I had been married for 25 years and he did not know that I had had an abortion. So he was the first one I had to go to and it was very, he was very forgiving. And how did then, that, I mean, how did that conversation go? Because I'm thinking about, because I remember my own conversation when I had to go to my husband because he didn't know about my stuff either and or my abortions. He didn't know about the abuse in my life. He didn't know any of that. And so when I had, when the Lord finally convinced me that he was enough, no matter what, that I had to tell my husband my story, yeah. it was awful. Like, I mean, the, the going to it was awful. Afterwards, it was great, but going to it was awful. So, so for the person that's watching and they've been holding their own secret for five years or 40 years and their husband doesn't know or their wife doesn't know, how did the Lord really convince you to, to do that? And how did you finally go to Jimmy and say, Hey, Jimmy, guess what? You know, like how, talk to the person that's kind of watching right now that can relate and thinks there's no way I'm ever telling my husband that I did this. Um, yeah. Do you know, it really wasn't the fear of my husband that I, that was so great. My, um, it was hard to, to tell him because, you know, um, one of the reasons that I had the abortion is so people wouldn't think that I wasn't the perfect preacher's daughter. And of course, Jimmy knew that I wasn't perfect by any means, but um, <laughs> I, it was, it was hard telling him, but, and he was, it was like, okay, I have to tell you something, you know, that was actually a breeze. The hard part was telling my dad, my dad was the one that, uh, he's the one that Satan pounded over my head because him being a minister and uh, being so strict uh, at the time when I was growing up. So he was the one. Now, I will tell you, it took, it was not easy. I, I, it took prayer, a lot of prayer, a lot of, uh, a lot of seeking God to tell my dad. But the Holy Spirit had told me that's what I had to do. So to, to really receive freedom, I had to tell the one thing, the one person that was keeping me, that, that was the reason for it. Yeah. And that I wanna, was, I want to say something real quick. You just said something that's so powerful to me. You said to receive freedom mm -hmm. to tell. Mm -hmm. And I want to just really pinpoint it was not to receive forgiveness. No. You, to receive freedom. And exactly. so we get those kind of crossed up and we, we kind of give um, the hold that we have when we are dealing with not being free we relate that to we're not forgiven but mm -hmm. as christian believers in jesus christ we know that his blood his death exactly on the cross, his resurrection conquering sin forever is what gives us forgiveness exactly we encourage you to tell your secret to save people and when the lord opens those doors for the freedom and i love that you just said that so Okay, sorry, go back. So to <laughs> sorry. Them, you had to tell your dad. But it was, no, I will tell you, that, that was the hardest thing. Other than burying my mother, that was the hardest thing that I have ever done in my life was to tell my dad. <clears throat> and I hope I don't break down here because every time I tell this, I, I cry because it's such a um, God thing. <clears throat> I um, went to my dad had called and asked that I, my dad had already remarried and I had um I called and asked if I could come out and talk which was very unusual because I I, I never asked them to come visit so uh they said well, sure come on so I went up and and I was uh, listen I, I was so I, I was so scared I don't know what I was scared of but I was terrified to tell him and so I, I cried for 30 minutes before I could even tell them. I mean, I, just the really ugly cry, you know, and it was like, oh, something terrible has happened. And so um, I finally was able to uh, to tell my dad. And I said, Dad, you don't know, but I had an abortion when I was young and, you know, and, uh, and, and was telling him. And, and uh, he said, he called the boy, young man's name, and he said, uh, is this, was this a father? And I said, how did you know? How did you even remember his name? And, and he said, well, mom and I knew that something was going on with you at the time, but we just didn't know what. 
but when when he asked me that um he started crying and he said honey i've always loved you but i've never loved you any more than i love you right now so i always tell the ladies that when the holy spirit is working on one end he's working on the other end That's right. because he wants freedom for you he wants he wants you to know that he is right there with you the holy spirit had to be with me or i couldn't have done it so we we sat and cried for i don't know how long it was it, it seemed like forever but and and he just put his arms around me and loved me and just he said honey i forgive you i'm sorry that you had to go through this all these years and so i um i was so relieved the burden was off my shoulders i didn't even i couldn't even feel my feet to walk out to the car wow. i was i was so light the burden had been so heavy on my shoulders for all those years but my dad was the one that when i told him satan had no hold on me whatsoever because my fear was my dad finding out that i had been pregnant in at a wedlock and had an abortion but when that was broken that when i walked out there was no bondage whatsoever i was no longer under bondage whatsoever to satan he could not hold it against me any longer he he was he hated that day because he no longer could um could say hey joe you had an abortion and he came to me quite often about that but no longer when he does that now and he it's ever once in a while he will say you had an abortion you had an abortion can you believe you had an abortion i go yes i did i did and i gave it to the father if you don't like it go to him if you've got a problem go to him i no longer carry that burden i no longer carry that shame and uh john 8 36 says if the son sets you free if jesus sets you free you are free indeed there is there's no more bondage you don't have to carry that any longer and i no longer had to carry that and it was it was several years after um, me telling my dad and telling my husband and the lord has led me to this person and that person and this person and that person and i mean and sometimes it's in the craziest places like the pizza hut i had to tell my girlfriend and uh she began to cry and she told me she said joe there's something i need to tell you and i said what's that and she said uh i had an abortion when i was young and she said um it was with her then husband but they were not married at the time and she had an abortion and then after they went ahead and got married and she was no longer able to have any children so that happened so often but she cried and it was like the holy spirit has just dropped people in my life just for you for instance just come into our bible study you know but uh god had led me to um uh abortion recovery i worked i worked with um another group that was abortion recovery but you know jesus took our burdens to calvary i mean in isaiah 53 it talks about he was pierced he was beaten he was uh, they stripped him of everything i mean he bled for me and and one thing the holy spirit spoke to my heart one time and i was telling him i just can't do it i just cannot tell anybody i just can't holy spirit said jesus went to the cross for you and if you continue to be ashamed if you continue in this then he went to the cross for nothing and that's the way we all are if we don't turn this over to the lord and let the lord bring us freedom to our lives then he went to the cross for nothing and i won't take some <laughs> i when when i see jesus you know i'm just going to i don't know i don't know if i'm going to dance i don't know what i'll do <laughs> but i'm going to be excited i'm going to tell you that so <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> okay <coughs> excuse me as we close out this episode um you know what how do you how do you want to end tonight's program reaching out to those watching um if they made it to the end and i hope that they have or they'll come back and watch the end 
um, what's the biggest burden on your heart for those that are either facing an unplanned pregnancy or maybe that have already chosen abortion and they're holding their own secret? Um, what's, what's your words to them? For those young ladies or women that are uh, that are pregnant and they're not, and, and they're undecided whether to keep their child or not. Um, I would, I just want to say, don't have an abortion. It's something you will never, ever get over. You will never, ever get over it. Uh, it's, you're taking the life of a child. There's just so much. I, I could just spend a, a long time on this. And, and I have at the Pregnancy Resource Center where I volunteered. But for those ladies and men, men also, this is such a burden for men. If you have had an abortion, receive, get some help. Uh, we, have beautiful, we have a wonderful Bible study that we, that we go through and, and the Lord works miracles every single time <clears throat> that we, we have Bible studies, receive the Bible study. Go through a Bible study with the Lord yourself. Get into the Word. Find out what the Word says. Don't allow Satan to destroy your freedom in your life by uh, hanging on to this abortion. Because I had promised, I had swore myself that I would never, ever tell anybody. And here I am telling everybody. But that's what freedom does. That's what I no longer have to carry that shame and that burden. And they don't either. They, uh, the same freedom that God gave to me is the freedom that they will give to them, that God will give to them. So I just, you know, contact care. We would love to talk with you. Uh, I would love to talk with you. Uh, receive freedom from the Lord. That is just, it's, it's awesome what God will do if you will just turn it over to him. I love that. And, you know, and it's so easy for us to talk about this now because we know the powerful program that CARE yes. offers. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've led it, you've been a leader in this program for many yeah. years and, and you kind of helped me get drawn in. Um, I mean, really from the minute that I attended my weekend and experienced my own freedom and forgiveness, um, I immediately began volunteering with CARE and just couldn't yeah. get, because once you experience that true freedom, and I wasn't, yeah ministry. I wasn't a pastor mm -hmm. by any long stretch, but I had been serving in full-time ministry for many years and no one knew my secret. Yeah. And, and the truth is, and, and you, I know you know this and you say this often, you probably are the one that first told me is that as long as you have this secret and Satan has those chains and bondage yes. over life, exactly. in Syria, you cannot be completely released for any kind of kingdom's purpose. I mean, you can be doing great things for the kingdom, but as long as Satan has this stronghold in your life, you are going to be limited to what you can do for him, for the Lord. And, um, and so thank you so much for your time. For those of you watching, please, we have not stopped doing ministry through all of COVID. We still have our weekend available. Um, please call us today to get registered. And um, we can do it in many formats. We can do it virtually. We can do it one-on-one. -on -one. We want to keep everyone safe, obviously, but we have not stopped doing ministry. So please reach out today. If you have been hurt by abortion, um, or if you if you know someone who's been hurt by mm -hmm. abortion, mm -hmm. share this video with them let them know that there is help and hope out there and until next week i will see you then god bless you all